Greetings, Patronus here, and I'll be reacting to Casio Geographic's newest upload, Why These Fish Belong in a Horror Movie More Than Sharks. Casio Geographic is a, is a YouTuber that uploads very good uh, content on animals and does so in an entertaining and educative way. He's very good at it, so go check him out, leave a subscribe, you know, like his videos. He's, he's really good at this stuff, and I really appreciate it. I've seen a few of his videos, and they're awesome. So with that in the way, let's get into the video. I see a river, and I don't know what's going to happen, so <laughs> let's find out. Oh, that's a big fish. Mm -mm, no, 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 no. I know. Oh, hell no. That no, that's that's horror movie nonsense right there. Uh, uh no, no. That I, that's like something I expect to see out of like some movie where people get eaten by some mutated animal or some nonsense like that. No, no, no. You know, the greatest trick Hollywood ever pulled was convincing the world that sharks are the only things to fear in the water. There be monsters. In the last video, we talked about how sharks might just be the most misunderstood creatures in nature, with a PR team that works about as hard as a whiteout's brain after six rounds of CTE. They've been done so dirty, they've actually overshadowed the other- Oh, that is a big, uh, well, that's a big fish. What is that, like a pike or a sturgeon? Something like that. I, I, yeah, I've, I've heard of these big ass fish, but the, the ones we just saw here, I have no idea what those a are. theological insanity spawned from Satan's septic tank. These are seven fish that should honestly- Oh, the seven deadly fish. Oh, nice. Okay, this is this is about to get scary and horrible. They terrify isn't it? you more than any shark. This isn't really to substitute one fear for another, but I do think these fish could make a much more traumatizing, nightmare-inducing horror flick than Jaws. And it starts right here. Those eyes belong to a pair of arapaimas, also known as a piruku. You've definitely seen them before. Does this video ring a bell? Okay. It definitely rang his. It's one of the biggest freshwater middle fingers nature forgot to vault. Usually growing to over six feet long and. Oh hell no! I'm I'm five foot four. That fish is bigger than I am. He'll turn me into a hashtag. Uh uh. No. Two hundred something pounds. It's bad enough those are NBA point guard measurements, but the beefiest ones can get to ten feet in length and weigh over four hundred pounds. This Jurassic roid guppy usually eats other fish to go with fruits and seeds, but also birds and allegedly even monkeys sitting on branches too close to water. And if you don't believe that, it's because you haven't seen them hunt. They're explosively quick, and the aquatic black hole has been known to confuse feet for fish and violently pull people underwater. One zookeeper reported made the mistake of trying to retrieve a glove that had fallen into an arapaima pool and in a split second got his hand wrist and several fingers broken there's also the fact that a refrigerator size oh no don't poke the fish D don't don't tap the fish tank and don't poke the fish fish will yeet themselves out of water in self-defense and let's talk about that ah. the plus size bite jay is covered in heavily armored scales not only tough enough to tank piranha attacks locals historically use them as nail file oh damn well that's very practical. Wow, okay, cool. They've also used their tongues as scrapers, since these fish have teeth growing out of a bony tongue that can be used to effectively crush struggling prey against the... Oh, teeth growing out of a tongue. That's disturbing. Nah. For their mouths. You know nature got in this bag when it made a fish that can breathe air, and the Antichrist of the Amazon has a modified swim bladder that was repurposed as lungs, meaning this flex of a fish can survive 24 hours out of water. On one hand, that means they have to come up for air every 20 minutes, or suffer the eternal shame of being a fish that finds a way to drown. Damn, I mean, that's interesting, wow. I mean, I've heard lungfish, they can like, you know, they can kind of breathe air more or less and go from body of water to body of water, just as long as, you know, there isn't too much distance between them. But at this moment, this video appears to be a threat to my mental health. But it also works out for them because in low oxygen water where most fish become slow and sluggish, the air merchant menace can pretty much go on a killing streak. Now the question is, could an arapaima pack up a person? Oh, damn. Well, there's no indication they see... Yeah, that definitely right there looks like something out of like a Jurassic movie. Yeah, that's a dinosaur movie right here. You're like, you're just like placid type nonsense. Oh no. Us as no. a snack. There are old stories of high strung assault guppies effectively drowning. Yeah, but they did, yeah, they did say over six feet. So yeah, okay. People. Likely by knocking them unconscious and leaving them incapacitated underwater. Not him, he's fine. You can unclench guidelines, he's good. But one man that almost wasn't was Jeremy Wade. He probably needs no introduction, but long story short, he's a zoologist who hosted the show River Monsters, which ended, but only because he caught every fish oh. nature had to offer. But he almost caught That's an early right. life retirement after a pissed off paima struck him square in the chest and nearly caused irreversible damage to his heart. 
Not only did this fish Damn. nearly have a singing. Damn. The suspect wasn't more than 90 pounds. Remember, the overachievers can press the scales at 400 or, you know, 180 kilograms worth of kill a man. So yeah, they are. <laughs> kill a man, kill a guy. I love that. That's brilliant. Okay. Yeah, he, he has a way with words and it's amazing. I, yeah, I'd say watch this guy. He is great. Arapaim is a shack size air breathing, armor plated predatory vacuum. And strangely enough, it's not the fish I'm most scared of in the Amazon. But we'll get to that. The piranha actually isn't. If you remember from an earlier video, piranhas might be just as misunderstood as sharks. They're mostly just scavenging opportunists that our childhoods convinced us were way more of an issue. Yeah, I just remembered years ago there was a movie called Piranha where I guess they were some supposed government installation or private genetics thing made piranha that were engineered in a certain way. And uh, these, two, uh, these two people went swimming in one of the pools and they got et. And then something happened and they got released into a river. And then supposedly they also had the ability to withstand or live in salt water as well. And so that was going to be an issue. I don't even know if there was a second movie or not, but, but I watching that movie as a kid. Yeah, it scared me. Yeah, you know. You cannot say the same for their cousins found in the Congo Basin of Central Africa. The Goliath tigerfish can grow. Oh, hell no. Look at those teeth. Those are like crocodile teeth almost, just from the looks of it. No, no. Nearly that's... five feet long, over 100 pounds. And they're what people were told piranhas are times 10. They're in the same order, but where piranhas are primarily a swimming cleanup crew, tigerfish actively hunt for their bodies. And you'll find out, nature built this prehistoric problem to do exactly that. They have sharp, dagger-like teeth that many swear are comparable to that of a great white. Although I personally see them as more conical, like a crocodile. Which is a coincidence, since the saltwater variety are their only natural predators. But of course, the swimming exploit. Oh man, look at that teeth. Oh, that's brutal. It has also been known to murk smaller crocs. They have eerily strong eyesight to track prey, special organs to detect the vibrations they make underwater, and they're strong enough to brute force their way through the turbulent waters of their hunting grounds. They're considered one of the toughest freshwater fish time left behind. Oh, damn. Tigerfish are even on record snatching birds out of the air. Not just birds, but swallows. Oh, nice. Some of the fastest and most maneuverable out there. The scientists studying them watch. So you say that the fish swallowed the swallows. Hmm. <laughs> Watch this, 300 birds got permanently grounded by tigerfish in just over two weeks. They're so feared Damn. that in many places they're only known by one name, Benga, meaning the dangerous fish. There's even a story of a young girl wearing a belt made out of bottle caps in order to ward off evil spirits. Ironically, it did the exact opposite and attracted a tigerfish who apparently confused the bottle caps for fish scales and nearly bisected the girl. Oh, that is brutal. That is brutal. Mm -mm, mm. Allegedly, it's an extremely fast, explosive vice grip with almost zero prey prejudice. And I'd still rather take a bite from them than the fish up next. And that's because next is the Kandiru. And a lot of y'all already know what road we're going down. The Kandiru is a tiny parasite in the Amazon, also nicknamed the vampire fish for their habit of invading the gills of larger fish and scraping the insides to feed off their blood. And with backward facing spines and a powerful bite, it's nearly impossible to shake it off before it completes its liquid transaction. The horror comes from the legend of Kandiru being attracted to the chemicals in urine and swimming up the urethra of unlucky humans. No, no, I think I've heard about this. I think it was like some, it was one of those shows from years ago that tried to scare you with like killer bees or fire ants or that kind of thing, right? And I think they mentioned this thing once. But it was a long time ago. And getting stuck up there. A fate that takes surgery to reverse. Imagine a serrated, sentient toothpick in your bathing suit business, and you'll see why the violation rather not. of the gills is so feared. But how much of this no. is even real? Most of the reports of people getting penetrated by peenfish are really sus at best. Apparently, they're not even attracted to the ammonia in human urine in the first place. There's a good chance that the can do or controversy came from European settlers coming home from long expeditions and telling these long, exaggerated stories to anyone who'd listen for status and attention. Yeah, but basically, they were probably lying for clout. You have to remember, the whole piranha skinning a cow thing spawned from locals staging an event to impress the president. Oh, for real? Yeah, no, I heard about piranhas supposedly eating an entire cow, but the details were very scarce. The truth is, your chances of peeing in the Amazon and getting frontal probed by a fish are about as much as you getting meal prepped by a shark or getting struck by lightning. Oh, my bad. And getting struck by lightning. That being said, I'd rather get tag teamed by the pets of Poseidon and the forces of Zeus than have a bloodluster up my urethra, no Franklin. If the odds ain't zero, they're just too high for me.
but I'll happily take a Kandu into the Mandu route, then run into Aquatic Op number four. In fact, I'm so afraid of it, I actually had to break my own rule for this video. Oh, I forgot. There are seven of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is definitely a threat to my mental health. The Humboldt squid obviously isn't a fish, but it's the closest thing to a living nightmare on this list. Oh, I've heard about these guys. I saw a thing years ago. Like, there were some supposed stories of, like, fishermen getting canceled. Or not canceled. Getting their life subscription, uh, you know, canceled from these, uh, from these squid. Uh, they're also pretty big. I don't know how big, though. They had like, and they're usually, I think I saw the ones I saw were red. They might have just been, I don't know, the color of the, I don't know, might have just been the water. I don't know. Let's but, be yeah. clear. At five feet, about a hundred pounds, there are bigger squid. What sets Humboldt's apart is they oh, can hunt no. in packs of over a thousand. Yeah, that, no. that's the reason. No, 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 no. I'm five foot four, and this thing is almost as tall as I am. And a thousand? Nah, nah, that's not. Nah. like a Tony Stell stat line. Nicknamed Diablo Rojo, there are old fisherman tales of men falling overboard, getting swarmed, and never coming back up. There's also stories of them curiously approaching divers before flipping and trying to rip their masks off. But who needs stories when marine biologist Alex Kerstich can tell you about the time several homicidal squids grabbed him and attempted to drag him down into the dark maw of the abyss. It gets worse when you realize what exactly happens when a red devil decides to take you to hell. Humboldts aren't just highly intelligent, they're covered in tiny red chromatophores that they can use to rapidly change color in order to communicate with each other. It's like Morse code but for Crip and Calamari. We don't know exactly what it means, but there's a good chance if a Humboldt confronts you and starts violently flashing red, it could be telling a bunch of others you can't see that you're free eats. So likely the last thing you'll see is pulsing red before you get eaten alive. It Oh, so they flash, they change the colors kind of like uh, the cuttlefish does. That's, yeah, that's not It doesn't amazing. help that satanic cephalopods are known for speed eating and are notorious for stripping fish to the bones faster than fishermen can reel them. Add a beak that can easily slice flesh and a bite force that can reportedly crack bone. And I think you see why I'm not exaggerating when I say I'll deal with every other fish on this list than a pack of predatory color coordinating squid. And I don't care what logic says. There's no doubt in my mind this squid would eat a human if they thought they could. Why? Humboldt squid only live about a year. That rapid growth in a short time means they'll rarely pass up an easy meal, even if it's their own kind. Humboldts are highly cannibalistic, and they will not hesitate to turn on a weak or injured member of their own hunting party. You know, there's that saying, dog eat dog world. This is clearly not, that this is a squid eat squid world. Holy crap. There was a study done off the coast of Chile that found that out of over 2,000 squid, more than half held the remains of their own kind in their stomachs. It sounds to me that anything they see as weaker than them is something they can feed off, and the only saving grace for us is they usually only press things smaller than they are. But you don't even have to be seen as food for affiliated squids to be a problem. Like a true xenophobic, they react to most things they don't understand with aggression, and they've even attacked cameras and equipment and left them out of order. But to me, the most disturbing aspect of getting assaulted by squids is, even if you escape, if you panic and surface too fast, you can get the bends and past tense anyway. That type of psychological horror is what puts the Humboldt here, and wouldn't you know, emotional damage is another symptom of finding out about the next fish. Because now we got the stonefish. Not one of, but the most famous oh, fish known guys. to man. It's armed with verruco toxin, and symptoms of getting stung include crippling pain, shock, tissue death, and even paralysis. And speaking of pain, you can be in agony for over 12 hours, and it's enough of an eternal jihad to cause hallucinations. Anecdotally, there are... Ooh. Nah. I mean, I'm not a fan of going to the beach, but I'm definitely not going to go to the beach now. I mean, where are these guys from? Tourists who've stepped on a stonefish only to beg their doctors to chop off the whole foot. Then there's the added threat of, if you don't get out of the water quick enough, it won't even be the venom. You can get paralyzed and catch a stage fatality to drowning. Even if you survive, you can still suffer permanent nerve damage and severe muscle atrophy. But that all wouldn't even be that bad if the stonefish wasn't nature's manifestation of a dick move. The most venomous animals on the planet usually dress with bright colors to warn the rest of the population that they're packing. Stonefish decided to do exactly none of that and instead cosplays as a stone, only to mortally punish you for its camouflage working. 
Like I said, it's like having invisibility, but also serving a death penalty every time someone steps on your foot. Then you gotta add the fact that there are another fish that can survive 24 hours out of the water, and they have a literal switchblade growing out of their forehead. Yeah, I knew oh, there damn. was a problem ever since one nearly permanapped Nigel Thornberry. A stone cloaking toxic minefield of misery, but with stonefish antivenom being the second most administered in Australia, today if you get stung, your chances of surviving are actually pretty good. Not like the next fish, because for this one, there is no antidote. Well, I mean, if you get stung by this thing, just from the description I've been hearing, you wouldn't want to survive. <laughs> There'd just be trauma. Just all kinds of trauma. The stonefish might be the most venomous fish, but the pufferfish is arguably the most poisonous thing alive. Quick rule of thumb on the difference. If it bites you and you die, it's venomous. If you bite it and you become a was, it's poisonous. And few things are more poisonous than puffer tetra. Oh, damn. That's a shark and... Is that an eel? Oh, damn. Past tense indeed. Wow. Toxin, which is 1,200 times more of a death sentence than cyanide. Tetrodotoxin oh, interferes with signals between nerves and muscles, causing muscle paralysis and a total shutdown. And of course, the fugu blowfish is considered a delicacy. But if the chef misses a single cut even by a little, you're instantly on the clock. You won't know that happened until your face goes numb and your lips and tongue get this weird prickling feeling. <sighs> Then, you suddenly get a splitting headache and dizziness to go with vomiting and diarrhea as your body desperately tries to purge the poison. But it's already too late and you'd start getting paralyzed, starting with the hands and feet, but slowly spreading out. And by this point, you likely can't even call for help. Finally, it'd get harder and harder to breathe until you notice the room slowly fade to black, leading to either a coma, seizure, or just death. The permanent kind. Tetrodotoxin essentially flips a kill switch in your body, and there is no antidote. The only treatment is hooking you up to a respirator to breathe for you and praying it passes. The poison puffball is such a problem, it makes you forget they also have teeth that can bite clean through your finger. In fact, it's more than enough to violate a scorpion. And I don't even know how to describe what they do to crabs. Turning crustacean into crustacean with a smile oh my less good is Lord. criminal. There is yeah. nothing funny about getting caught in that bite, with reports of pufferfish mutilating the genitals of men in one case in 2008 where a Cambodian child had his uh, coin purse sliced in half by a pufferfish. And unlike the Kanduru, this ain't a myth. Have your privates out by a puffer and you might just get... <laughs> So that's six oh. of the Sinister Seven, but before we get to the last one, oh, we got honorable mentions. The fact that there's a fish that weaponized electricity enough to decommission a caiman, and we just accept that, is kinda crazy. And the thing is, it might not even be the voltage, but it's getting knocked out in shallow water that'll get you. So yeah, there's a, there was a saying years ago that I heard on, was it Family Guy I think it was, where the, uh, it says, damn nature, you scary. And yeah, nature is scary. Fish are one of the fastest things in the sea. They also have a built-in melee weapon equipped capable of inflicting life-altering harm. In 2015, a Hawaiian man was fatally struck in the chest while trying to catch one. Another man in Malaysia bled to death after a swordfish yeeted itself out of the water and also RNG'd him in the chest. Swordfish are also on record shanking sharks and even bleeding out sea turtles. The oh, sheep's head fish. Oh, hell no. That looks like just... That looks... Okay, one, the teeth are kind of goofy. But the inside of the mouth is ridiculous. R really only because of that mouth. Shipophobics be dead. Yeah. The Titan Triggerfish is a highly aggressive honey badger with gills capable of dishing out severe injuries with the same teeth they use for crunching coral, sea urchins, and even a crown of thorns starfish. The trigger might as well be named after their temper, and this foot and a half vibe check is a big reason why beginner divers never go back in the water. Speaking of big, the Goliath Grouper. Oh, Lord, that is... I, I don't I can't tell far far away that diver is from that fish, but that's ginormous. That looks like that fish would eat him. At eight feet up to eight hundred pounds. Okay, it's a, it's a big fish. Eight feet, eight hundred pounds. Oh, okay. Fish the size of a small car feels more like a leftover Jurassic prop. Lucky for us, most divers describe it as a gentle giant with the temperament of a Saint Bernard. Although a Saint Bernard didn't allegedly swallow an entire kid in the Florida Keys, allegedly. But since we're on the subject, the last fish on this list are catfish. And yeah, that's kind of cheating. There's over 3,000 species of catfish, even including the genital jihad, the candiru. Catfish are like the trash compactors of the fish family, which isn't a problem. Oh, that's a big fish. The catfish I've seen growing up, they may have gotten a little over a foot, maybe, maybe a little bigger, you know, less than two feet, but... Where the hell do you find these giants? 
until you see just how big they can really get. And once a catfish gets big enough, there aren't a lot of things alive they oh, won't no. try to eat. We've seen armadillos, turtles, and even unaware seagulls get forward by a catfish. There's a species in France that figured out how to stalk and hunt bathing city pigeons. Another learned to wait by cave entrances to suck up any exhausted bats that fall in. There was even a catfish nicknamed Kuno the Killer who terrorized a German lake and somehow caught and ate someone's dog. Basically, they're oh, all that I've talked about pelicans being just in fish form. The question is if a catfish has ever eaten a live human, and it isn't even if they would, but if they could. The Wells catfish can grow to 10 feet long and cap out at 300 pounds. A Macon catfish can also get to 10 feet, and the heaviest one ever recorded was pushing 650 pounds. If there's a catfish that could stomach a human, it should be one of these, but there's a slightly smaller catfish that was believed to be a legit man-eater. In the late 90s and early 2000s, a series of fatal attacks on people in the Kali River had people convinced there was something in the water hunting humans. In these attacks, victims were suddenly pulled underwater in front of people, only for their bodies to never be recovered. In 2007, Atal Kumar was swimming with friends when he was violently dragged underwater, and while he was never seen again, friends caught a glimpse of something, something that they could only describe as an elongated pig. Crocs and bull sharks were considered, but the prime suspect ended up being the goonch. At about over 6 what? feet, 200 pounds, the goonch is usually smaller than the whales in the Mekong. But it's feared oh, wow. that the practice of burning funeral pyres by the river led to the equal opportunists developing a taste for human flesh. And while it's a stretch to say a corpse happy catfish can swallow an adult, it becomes a little less believable with children. There's no solid proof of a catfish catching a person, but they for sure can off one. The biggest ones can easily overpower you, if not just knock you out and drown you. Not to mention a majority are venomous, with those spines putting both experienced fishermen and oblivious bystanders in the hospital. They also have a nasty sandpaper-like bite that can easily draw blood. But what really makes them a living horror movie is their intelligence. The ones packing up pigeons, they weren't always doing that, but they pretty much ate everything else around them and were forced to adjust. So it's anyone's guess what could happen yeah. if they gain a taste for humans. And with catfish being swimming tongues with over 175,000 oh, wow. taste buds across their bodies, yeah, I doubt acquiring taste takes long. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure you drink water, hug your mother, try not to get catfished out here. If you'd like to see me swim with slightly <laughs> less freaky fish, the full GoPro footage of me in Hawaii will be uploaded to my Patreon. And with that last second self promo out the way, I'ma see y'all in the next one. What is this man doing? You blowing her bubbles? Mm -hmm. Is he gonna get bit? Okay, that was a bit too much. Wow, okay. That was wild. I had no idea a catfish can get that large. I mean, I heard about the humble squid, right? And they've been all, you know, big and everything like that. I didn't realize they were basically my size. And, damn, 800 pounds for some of these guys? Oh, that's, that's, yeah, they're monsters. They're, you're a monster at that point. You're not, you're not even a living, you're not even, yeah, you're just a monster. Holy crap. Well, anyway, that, that, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. I mean, yeah, go check this guy out. He's, he's amazing. Uh, yeah, this definitely this video was definitely a threat to my mental health. Holy crap. All right, I'll see you guys later. I love your faces, and I'll see you next time. Bye.